Hello everyone, my name is Rocco Muscaratolo and I'm a Site Reliability Engineer here at Okta. And my talk today is titled DevOps and Security, The Best of Frenemies. Uh, now before we get started, uh, just really quickly wanted to go over the term DevOps. It's a pretty big buzzword, means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Um, but for me, and more specifically for today, um, I want to use it in the context of IT automation. And not just IT automation in general, more specifically uh, the back-end infrastructure side. Uh, for example, an engineer automating an email they might send uh, when they're out sick is cool, but I'm more referring to that same engineer building out email servers. Um, all right, that out of the way, let's get started. So the DevOps mindset wants to go fast. It focuses on automation and system design. But what does that even mean? Well, here's a couple terms that is kind of the DevOps mindset in practice, uh, what it means practically. Infrastructure as code. So this is something like uh, HashiCorp's Terraform or AWS's cloud configuration. Um, this is taking your, uh, your infrastructure such as uh, load balancers, um, servers, uh, DNS records, and putting them in code form. Um, that improves its reliability, repeatability, and even gets you some modularity if you do it right. Configuration management. Uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Um, in general, this is more around uh, getting to a desired state of your um, servers. So everything from the configuration files of MySQL uh, and environment properties of your Java code, um, but it also includes things like your system packages uh, and the users that you have installed on your system. All of that falls under the umbrella of configuration management. Um, some great tools in the space such as Chef, Puppet, Ansible, SaltStack, lots of good choices. CI, CD pipelines. Uh, so this is kind of the holy grail of DevOps. Um, in general, it means uh, full continuous integration and continuous deployment. Um, and that refers to full-on automation of a particular software's life cycle. So as developers and engineers, you work on artifacts, whatever they could be. Uh, they could be a war file for Java, um, or they could just be a script or whatever. Um, as you test and develop in them and you validate them through your CI system, um, you then have a release ready candidate uh, for uh, production. And so the CD part of it comes in to play where you're automating the actual uh, push to production. Now with that comes a lot of controversy of uh, you know human intervention, um, at what point do you want a human being making any decisions? Uh, and when you think it'd be better if you just automate it in general? Um, again, the DevOps mindset is kind of, well, any decision that a human being is making, maybe that human being should design the automation instead. Move fast and break things. Uh, I think that's a quote by Mark Zuckerberg. Um, side note, don't do that. Uh, yes, move fast, but try not to break anything. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the DevOps mindset in a nutshell. Now, these concepts are only possible with a robust system design that focuses on automated provisioning, service reliability, and fast error recovery. And with that, DevOps is awesome. The DevOps mindset can transform your operations team and lead to huge productivity gains. It can help bring out the very best in your engineers. All right, pop quiz time. So I wanted to take a moment and just ask ourselves some hard questions. Um, this is not uh, going to be a one size fits all. Uh, everyone's gonna have different use cases, different levels of risk. Um, so just take that with a pinch of salt and really try to apply these generic questions to your particular circumstance. All right, with that, let's just get started. So on the topic of system passwords, when was the last time you changed a critical system's password? Um, let's keep it simple with databases. How quickly could you do it in an emergency? Could you change these per uh, passwords without a service disruption? And when was the last time you validated any of this? All right, so password security is a huge topic. Um, we could spend hours going over the nuances um, and the very healthy debate in the space. 
Uh, for one, there are some big differences between individual user credentials and the system's passwords. Um, one can be uh, pretty much in someone's head and never needed to be written down, um, and others, um, unfortunately, can only be written down in some form or another. But in general, there are still some inherent risks to keeping the same passwords around for longer periods of time, such as a system breach, database leaks, being susceptible to brute force attacks, and etc., etc. Now, let's say if that password does become compromised, how quickly could you change it? Um, again, this is going to vary from team to team and unfortunately even from application to application. Um, but let's just start from the bare minimum. Um, if you had a gun to your head uh, and someone told you you needed to change your password right now during this talk, how would you do it? Uh, for some of us, unfortunately that means going straight to SSH and Vim. Um, and truth be told, if it gets the job done, why not? Um, Obviously, there are better ways to do it, um, and I hope if you're in uh, this stage uh, of your operations team that uh, you're already looking at improvements. Um, some quick and easy improvements you can make is something like CSSH. Um, this allows you to SSH into multiple servers at the same time, so that way when you type on your keyboard and make no typos and make no mistakes whatsoever, um, you could do it on a number of servers at once. Uh, just increases efficiency a little, all the same risks. Um, a better choice uh, might be something like Ansible. Uh, not only can you push out um, remote commands uh, in a fleet, um, but even better, you could write playbooks and scripts that will do that for you. Um, again, codifying it, making it repeatable, more reliable. Um, and the best thing about it is you don't need anything additional. Uh, Ansible works with your SSH protocol as it is today. It's very inexpensive to get up and running. Configuration management. Um, hopefully um, you're already at or looking at this stage um, to the point where you might be using Chef uh, to manage the passwords on your system to connect to MySQL, for example. Um, but even that uh, comes with some caveats. If you had that change that password right now, how quickly could you do it? Um, does it require uh, a protected repo with a PR request uh, pipeline? Um, do you need more than one person to update your repo? Um, how fast does your CI sy uh, system actually roll out those changes? Um, and then again, let's say you've got all that figured out and you can make a change relatively fast. Um, how do you make that change? Um, one extra efficiency you can add to that, and for some people might be required, is a targeted apply. If you're doing a chef convergence uh, on a server and all you needed to do was change one thing, um, maybe you can target a specific recipe. Um, a lot of companies don't unfortunately um, run chef convergence uh, on a routine basis and instead have release windows um, and are much more conservative on when they run chef. So just running chef in total against your database servers and your app servers um, might open yourself up to more errors than you need. And speaking of that, do we even have a rollout process? Um, do we have it written down somewhere that in the event of a password compromise, do X, Y, and Z? Uh, for example, are there certain servers that are higher priority than others? Um, hopefully you have a process in place where you're running these changes in testing uh, environments and then QA environments and then finally production after your changes have been validated in less riskier places. And with that rollout process, you might want to look so at something like a canary servers. Um, that is, in production, you might have a smaller subset of servers you might want to test these changes on before rolling out to the entire fleet. And speaking of those kinds of errors, how do you even know when you have one? Let's say you do do a full chef convergence on all of your servers, um, do you even know if you're causing any issues until it's too late and you're getting uh, reports from customers? Um, putting in some validations after your configuration management uh, or really any change whatsoever um, is really a good idea. 
Could you change these passwords without service disruption? Or would it require a maintenance window? This usually becomes a lot harder um, than you would think. As you get into the, to the details, uh, things start to, to pop up as not very practical, or you end up with a chicken and egg situation. For example, when the password for a service has changed, again, maybe to a database, what happens to your clients that are connected to that database? Um, do they immediately get kicked out with their sessions revoked? Uh, is there even such a thing as session? If they have a session, um, how long does that last until they need to reauthorize a new one? Um, these are all really uh, tough questions because they're always on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, some applications behave like this and etc. So one um, uh, general solution to this chicken and egg problem might be um, actually doing a blue-green flip of your access credentials. For example, before touching a, an existing user's credentials, um, you can add a new user with its new password and then have all of your clients roll over to that new set of credentials before doing anything with the compromised set of credentials. Uh, again, blue-green deployment. Now, all of this is theory until you've actually validated your assumptions. Um, you're gonna wanna troubleshoot, revise, and iterate on this process always. Um, as soon as you get it working um, and things look good, you're gonna come up with an even better way of uh, approaching this, and that's great. Always continue to iterate on your existing uh, processes. Uh, and once you feel you've gotten yourself into a, a, a decent state, um, go ahead and schedule a live demo um, in your testing and your QA environments with an additional audience. Um, so that way they can bring in their experience and maybe they can come up with even better ideas. Um, and then eventually uh, you're going to want to test this uh, live in production because ultimately that's where this is going to count. Now, if you happen to be someone who's uh, listening to this talk and thinking that their own answers could be a little bit better, then this talk was for you. And chances are, you know exactly what needs to be done to improve things, both for your own department and for the company at large. Blue-green deployments, configuration management, we've been doing this for years. Um, this is what we do for a living. And now I'd like us to ask how many other areas could use this same level of attention. Uh, here's a couple of uh, ideas that we can get started with. Account provisioning and deprovisioning. Uh, another big one. Um, how many times have you gone through some of your systems um, that have a, a scary level of uh, privilege um, and you found a user um, that had left the company uh, more than a few months ago? Um, it's a very common occurrence uh, and it's one of those things that you know uh, we could easily do better with. SSL certificate revocations. Um, same to be said with VPN access or really anything that's not using a password particularly. Um, if a certificate, uh, a private key, for example, becomes compromised, how quickly could you revoke that cert? Same thing to be said with your two-factor auth or multi-factor auth devices. If uh, someone misplaces their YubiKey, how quickly could you disable that YubiKey uh, from that account? Speaking of passwords, what's the best password? No password. Um, again, this really comes down to the uh, system versus user password story. But uh, in the case of users, um, we can see that the industry is maturing a lot to the point of uh, biometrics uh, and uh, two-factor auth. Uh, Access, auditing, and monitoring. Uh, this is another huge topic. But generally speaking, um, when a user um, or a system is uh, making any changes on a system, you're going to want to know who um, those changes were made on behalf of. Um, and also, uh, for the sake of monitoring, you want to know when changes are being made um, in case someone happens to be a bad actor. Um, distributed denial of service, backups and restores, um, etc. cetera. Um, I hope um, you can kind of uh, take some of these ideas as a launching platform 
to make improvements in your own uh, companies. Now, getting time to work on these issues won't be easy. Allocating any time or resources to anything other than new features or something that directly relates to service stability can be a hard sale to make, especially to your project leads or scrum masters. But every step towards this goal is time well spent. Thank you.